I don't know if I would call this a trilogy necessarily, but you had a word for it? Yeah. I would call this a trinity <laughs> because it is a Christian film trilogy. It's so, three movies yeah, in this Christian movie in this yeah. Christian series. Yeah. Because yeah, three movies. Uh whenever there's something three, you got to Basically just it's call the it a try trinity. prefix yeah. to it. I yeah. wouldn't call it a trilogy necessarily just because the first two movies really weren't great. And I wouldn't, as a film buff, I wouldn't call it a trilogy. The take, the take in three movies isn't a trilogy because the last two movies are terrible. Right. So we're going to give The God's Not Dead three movie series the, a new title. Yes. <laughs> the Trinity. God's Not Dead, A Light in the Darkness, was written and directed by Michael Mason, and I am joined today by my friend and colleague, Cyrus. Hello, everybody. He's a co-worker from the news station who I work with. Uh, you're, you're just as, uh, um, you want to be just as, as involved in this series, and you're just as into movies and into Christian film, especially as I am, so yeah. you you uh, decided to get get on board with, with this whole series and watch the movie with me, and I appreciate you coming along. Yeah, I appreciate being invited. Yeah. And I just want to say, um, spoiler warning for everything. Like, yeah. Yeah, spoiler warning. Is that good? Spoiler no. warning for the whole movie? Yeah. That's pretty much what we do here. Yeah. It's the intense and personal story of Reverend Dave, played by David A.R. White, once again. His church was basically on college grounds, on university grounds. Students are saying that he has no right to be there. And then one of the students, Adam, a senior at the university, throws a brick through a basement window, knocks a gas line loose, sets the whole place ablaze, sets the whole place on fire. Jude, who's investigating the basements, who's investigating the rock thrown in, is caught in the flames and he's carried away in an ambulance. He dies later after that. And just the rest of the movie is just this intense and crazy series of disappointments for Reverend Dave as he's going through this long struggle and this long trial of what should he do. He's being sued by the university, and the university is trying to get rid of the uh, get rid of the church. Reverend Dave is trying to stand for the church, and th it's just this long struggle for the character. Toward the end of the movie, all the university students are gathered on their two sides, kind of mirroring what happens in God's Not Dead 2, where four God and anti-God are, are taking their sides. Dave walks down the middle. Dave steps up. He quiets everyone down, says, I, I'm sorry. I apologize. Let's just stick together and uh, let's let's hand out these candles let's stick together as a community this is what church is all about peace forgiveness and they all kind of settle things out yeah which i found really good yeah like the whole like pr pretty much the whole plot of the movie is dave fighting for his church yes um and for it to kind of end in like i'm willing to lay lay down the church so the the school can actually have its student center mm -hmm. and then i'll build a new church um that did somewhere show, else yeah. yeah that showed a lot of humility yeah and a lot of growth for his character yeah um and yeah it was really cool just the whole underlying forgiveness arc like man we would both go ahead and say that god's not dead three was a surprising uh intrigue and a surprising win for this series i think coming after a couple of weak movies in both of our opinions yeah. this movie finally has that one focus it finally has the characterization it has the humanity and everything that we wanted from the past two movies it brings the humanity to dave's character as he as a pastor a reverend who might be looked up to higher than a pastor this reverend who's actually going through his faith his struggles in faith and struggles in his personal life and seeing uh shouldn't god be taking care of all these things he's praying and praying shouldn't god be taking care of my church and everything and things are still going wrong for him he's losing touch with everything he's getting uh anger outbursts toward everybody around him he's still praying out to god and then you know it kind of browns out to that simple little message of just forgiving everybody and just letting everything let be yeah honestly the production of this movie is exceedingly step, better a huge step than above the previous the other couple movies. of movies um especially just the burnt down church yeah like it it's weird to say but it was beautiful just how like of course yeah and there was just so much like up stuff like up promotion like up production wise mm -hmm. like uh they likes to run when they're he's... not trying to pretty up the picture yeah. they're not trying to uh soften the drama if you will like making it a drama that a two-year-old won't cry to yeah. i mean they're making something that maybe a 20-year-old would cry to 
Right. And I think that's something that I've been asking for in, in past reviews with Pure Flix movies and with Goss Not Dead movies especially, to show the intensity and to show uh, the crushing circumstances that are happening to these characters. Yes. Yeah. Production-wise, it's sort of sort of reminded me of old fashion where it's just like the cinematography wise it can be really beautiful it can actually sort of mm -hmm. be a little bit artistic just to say these nice things about these gods not dead movies is, is very liberating yeah yeah it is it looked nice it felt nice um the first act was a little bit difficult to get through um it still had the same old introduced characters very quickly within the first 30 minutes or so of the movie it dropped adam and Cheetan in pretty quickly i didn't care about them at all for like a good 10 15 minutes or so in their first few scenes i was struggling to connect with them a lot but their characters connected very nicely to the main plot with how adam was was responsible for burning down the church and then he confesses mm -hmm. up to dave and they make and they make dues and they make terms throughout the rest of the movie and then Cheetan. Yeah. Um, struggling with her faith just like Dave was. But those, as those two characters were kind of dropped into the first act and were difficult to connect with, the movie actually somehow made them work out. Yeah, and it was... Yeah, I would say in the beginning of the movie, they kind of break up, like, Josh and his girlfriend in the first yeah, movie. Yeah, yeah. Um, but then, like, as the movie progresses, uh, he opens up to her. Like, it's like... Mm -hmm. This is I, why I yeah. don't believe in God. This is why I'm having trouble with it. Yeah, not it. only just the, like, his own struggle with, like, his abusive dad and the church, like, basically excommunicating her. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. It was just, like, him opening up to her about the fire and it being an accident and him trusting her enough to open up just what he did. I and thought then, she was going to rat him out at that point. Like, who's going to cave first? Is the movie going to play that? Yeah. That candle? And I was very surprised at the fact that... Um, the anonymous text was from him. Yeah. I'm like, okay, that's that's interesting. That's an interesting it, choice. It, it worked. And, like, his reason was, like, I was expecting forgiveness. And mm -hmm. it just shows, like, how human uh, the movie actually is with David actually going up and actually attacking... Yes. Adam. And then, like, Adam being like... I did this. He's not the brutal, D-baggy kind of senior college kid yeah. who, who just hates Christianity and, you know, will stand up against the Reverend no matter what. But it brought that human element to it to uh, help usher in the theme yeah. in the end. And I say it that way because the story actually ushered in the theme at the end. Yes. I mean, there were some preachy moments, of course, just to introduce the concepts of yeah. God, things like that. But it wasn't as preachy. It wasn't as, remember, this is our theme every 10 minutes or so. This is our theme. Just make sure you remember that, audience. But the theme of forgiveness and, and just being one with your community and that church is community was brought out quite naturally and quite yeah. well in the end. Yeah. I don't know. I, li I really like Pierce's character arc. Yes. Pierce's character arc. Want to talk arc. about Pierce a little bit? Yes. I like his brother. Yeah, Pierce it, did, it is... did brotherhood very well. It, it, yeah. it did kind of the goofiness and the picking on each other a bit very well. I I enjoyed those scenes a lot. Yeah, the teasing when he's talking to um, uh, what's the say grace scene? Yeah, yeah, oh we both gosh, laughed, uh, genuinely laughed a couple of times in this movie. Yeah, every time he was on screen, <laughs> I would laugh. Like he I'm just, just waiting for something. Yeah, he carried the movie basically. Uh -huh. Like I think he's definitely the best character. God's not dead is introduced. Yeah, um, definitely the most. He is the most human character. Like, he's not a believer. He fell away from the faith. David Arrow White, the way he played off of um, John Corbett, mm -hmm. uh, it was just, it, it just felt very natural. Mm -hmm. Like, they genuinely They were, were maybe best fun. friends, yeah. and they worked together quite well on the set. Yeah. And it was cool, too, because, like, no matter what was going on, like, tension-wise between the brothers, you could always tell that they had each other's back. And yeah. And that, that is... Honestly, true. They were right. testing each other in the right ways. They were hand yeah. in hand in just the right ways. Pierce challenged Dave on the whole persecuted mindset. Yeah. And that's a problem I've had with the whole God's Not Dead franchise is this whole... They're like, showing everyone as yeah. persecuting Christians. Yeah, this whole like victim mentality where it's yes. like, you're not being persecuted. I mean, yes, some things are like the media is attacking you somewhat and the community doesn't really want you around but be, because the past like you're because christian be, communities yeah. are, are behaving inappropriately or in certain ways yeah. that, that people don't like just because like jude died doesn't mean like that like that's a hate crime you gotta yeah so yeah. it definitely like it challenged a different perspective the way like, that we view when when crap happens and yeah. the way that we view ourselves when crap happens like are like are we actually like the good guys are we right all the time whenever we're proclaiming things yeah. Like, Pierce brings that perspective into it and questions it. Yeah. And that's something, like, throughout the movie, movie before uh, Dave is humbled. It's like, 
we got up Christians got to fight back. Christians are being persecuted all the time, and it's like, really, we're not. At least not in America. We're not being persecuted to an extent of like how um, like the blacks are pre- were persecuted, or how like our houses aren't constantly being broken yeah. into. We're not being put to death. And I loved that part in the movie. I think that was honestly my favorite scene because it it criticized the, movie the first asks two movies. The audience questions. Yeah. It critic not only that, but it criticized the first two movies, and it was like, yes, that's... this was written and directed by a different person, so that might be why the first two were well, it was written by a few different people, but directed by the same person. Mm-hmm. So it felt the same way, and I, maybe this new director, new writer, brought that perspective to it. Even Joss Whedon's character, like I, I not... enjoy him, I still enjoy him, I still enjoy Shane Harper's character. Yeah, I honestly wasn't the biggest fan of uh, Josh Whedon. Um, I think, honestly, in the first movie, I was more of a fan of Radisson just because he's Hercules, <laughs> you know? Like, I mean, I was rooting for them both, and they yeah. were both the strongest point of the movie. Yeah, and I think, like, my one of my biggest issues with the movie is, like, someone has to die in order for something else Some to happen. Some kind of a change to go yeah. about. Yeah, and I think Jude had to die for him to kind of have... Mm-hmm. For the, like, as the whole catalyzer yeah. of the conflict and his so interpersonal like, conflict. yeah. So I think that death made more sense than Radisson's death in the last movie. <laughs> Who flips over the car. Yes. <laughs> and it's like, it just... Dave comes oh to the gosh. rescue, I'm going to pray for you, and then Radisson accepts it before passing away. But yeah, anyway, yeah. besides all of that, Jude passing away, and then that being the major thing of uh, Dave wants to resurrect the church for the church's sake and for Jude's sake. Yeah. It was a very good catalyzer for the rest of the film. No concert! <laughs> <laughs> so the Newsboys are still featured in this movie... But they're in it very briefly. It's a brief cameo on, on a briefly. kid's cell phone at, when they're on the talk show, when they're talking with, with, with someone else in the media about here's where we are with God and here's how it needs to be with, with the community. And that's it. I think this is, this is the first God's Not Dead movie without a concert at the end. I mean, it's still, I think it still has to text everyone you know, God's Not Dead, and it, and it inserts on Cheaton's phone that she texts God's Not Dead to, her peop- to well, people she knows. It was a Facebook update. Yeah. That's okay. what she did. Like, yeah. she updated it on Facebook. And that... That's something, too. It was very Facebook heavy. It was social like, media oriented. Very social media We're talking media about oriented. likes. We're talking about posts. Yeah, live, people. live streams on Facebook on the, about the news. It was very interesting. It was odd, and it was interesting. Like, okay, you're going to try to cater to our generation. That's a bit odd for you to do just to think, oh, we're all about social media. But, okay, it made that move. It fit the story. Social media and media in general was a very contributing factor to the movie. Mm-hmm. Um, I so, think that brings yeah. me to another cri- uh, criticism, that especially due to the editing. It's kind of a recurring issue with God's Not Dead, that it doesn't connect some of the scenes very well and doesn't connect the cause and effects. Oh, yeah. This has the God, the, the God's Not Dead syndrome of cutting too much and uh, something happens in the cut and in between what's going on between these two parts. So I'm, in my brain, I'm trying to fill things in and connect things in. I had an easier time as the movie went on. I mean, there was some shaky cam. Yeah, um, quite a bit of shaky cam. Quite a bit of not taking care of the scene quite well. A yeah. lot of the editing didn't quite click together very well. Yeah, and I would say, like, people walking, it was always shaky and it was... It, it was obnoxious, but like mm-hmm. it, it it didn't. But when Dave was running, there were nice tracking yeah, shots. Yeah, there of were him. very nice tracking shots. So I'm like, why didn't you guys maintain tracking shots, sort of throughout the movie when the people are walking? Mm-hmm. Um, and I get like I sometimes get the shaky cam symbolizes like the, on, the intensity and yeah, the instability. Some, yeah, inst- instability. It worked here and like, there. It yeah. was too much in some places. Yeah, and that's something too. It's like it works in some places. It doesn't work. Throughout the whole movie, yeah. Um, weirdly enough, I think I would recommend it. Yeah. Um, no, probably not to. Ev- well, I guess I would recommend it to everybody. But just I to would give re- it a try, I would recommend this one. Yes. I would recommend the other movies not being watched at all because this one feels a lot more inclusive. Of like, um, it wants to actually reach out to yeah. other people of different views. Not like, here's the gospel, here's what you should believe, and go out and tell yeah. everybody that God's not dead. And I mean, it does have that very strong gospel message. Like, I, this is even a movie where God is a character. 
God's Not Dead, Light in the Darkness was a big step up and a much bigger improvement. It has the humanity, it has the intensity, it has sort of the humbleness to like question its audience a little bit, to question the Christians. What do you actually believe? It, it does. It's grounded and it, and it feels good and everything works out naturally. It's not preachy. Newsboys isn't all over it like we said earlier. There's no Newsboys concert. The, it just brings up a very simple theme of forgiveness and reaching out to people very nicely. This is the better of the three, and it's a very pleasant surprise. I would go ahead and give God's Not Dead a Light in the Darkness a B minus. I would definitely say I'm surprised mm -hmm. of how the movie played out. Um, it's definitely a huge step above the first two. Yes. Um, it made me laugh. It got me a little teary eyed. A little bit. Um, it, there were some really great character uh, moments. Uh, really good character arcs, like mm -hmm. character growth. Yes. Um, and I love seeing that. Uh, production wise, it was a uh, step up, like a good step forward. Um, Very good visually. Yeah, I would actually give this just a regular B. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. I would just say give it a try. Just just see what you think. Yeah. I mean, uh, even if you're really like highly against the first two, but if if you see this like advertised to you, just give it a try. Give it a watch. Watch like the first half or so, and if you don't want to see the rest, you don't have to see the rest. If you're curious, go ahead and watch the rest of it. If you want to show somebody this movie, Trinity, uh, just skip the first two. Um, it's sort of like the Star Wars prequels, where you want to skip the just first two. Just learn about the story and the characters of the yeah. first two. That will fill you in with everything. Yeah, just skip the first two movies, go into episode three. <laughs> um, where Anakin turns to Vader. Yeah, that's the most important movie. Thanks very much for, for coming out here with yeah. me tonight. It's getting kind of late. We both work in the morning. But yes. I appreciate you stepping up to this anyway and watching the movie with me anyway. Yeah. Right when it comes out, getting a review out to it. So thanks, thanks again for coming out. Yeah, thanks for having me. It Hope was fun. Yeah, it was very yeah. fun. Hope to see you more and more and more videos. I think you're going to be getting much more involved with me with these videos. But yeah, thanks again to you. Uh, thanks again for watching this review. So until next time, stay faithful to the movies.